After Frontline aired League of Denial on PBS, a handful of former NFL members came forward and admitted, yes, they're suffering from post-concussion syndrome from hard hits on the football field. Jay Frega, founder of the Knockout Project and a former athlete himself, has been with us before and joins us again today to talk about the recent findings since League of Denial and also to answer a few questions that we have about this. Jay, thank you so much for doing this for us. Now, in the past month or so, so many re re revelations have come forward about this happening, and it's become more real to these former NFL players. Talk about that. Well, uh, there's, there's been an important test that has come out uh, or a means for diagnosing um, CT, chronic traumatic encephalopathy in living players or living people. Um, previously, the only way to find that out has been post-mortem. Um, and so I think that uh, since that test has come out, a few uh, athletes, former you know, NFL players have come out um, and been tested. and been found to lo and behold have signs of CT, which uh, you know shows up as tau protein in the brain. Um, you know, but the but the symptoms of which are um, they mirror classic bad post concussion syndrome, which is uh, memory, uh, poor memory. You have uh, physical issues. You know, this incredible crushing headache. Um, you have emotional instability, and so as these players have started to become. Um, Diagnosed, if you will, um, I think that they've started to talk. Tony Dorsett is a is a guy that came out and uh, mentioned that, you know, he was diagnosed with it and that it answered some questions as far as what he had been dealing with. Um, and then uh, a day later, uh, Terry Bradshaw, who's another NFL Hall of Famer, came out and uh, and you know announced that he hadn't been tested, but that he too had uh, dealt and suffered with depression and uh, memory loss due from hits. And you're familiar with these symptoms because as a former athlete yourself, you kind of know what these guys are going through. It must be hard to look at some athletes. I know Brady and Belichick had a conference and he kind of brushed it off. Brady did saying, oh, you know, I don't, I don't even think about it. It must be hard to kind of look at that and say, as a former athlete, this happens far too common because you've gone through it, you know. I think that um, athletes, the mental composition of athletes, um, uh, is, you know, is difficult. So for Brady and Belichick, I think that, that we can say that, uh, you know, the NFL came out and, and told them not to cooperate uh, probably with, uh, you know, the front line piece or to give it the time of day. And I know that when Brady and Belichick had kind of uh, been asked the question about, uh, about the show that um, it was during a press conference and typically those guys are going to stay right on target on the game that week. I think that a competitive athlete, their, their makeup, I think that they're very id driven. You know, when Freud talked about different parts of the psyche, the id is the most um, uh, primitive in it, and it has to do with your survival instincts, it has to do with your pleasure instincts, it has to do um, with all those basic instincts. And the other, the other two components sort of um, help modify things like that. But I think that athletes are so id driven and so goal oriented that they're able to gloss over. Um, you know, the threat of repercussions down the road. Uh, I do think, though, that once a player's been out of the league for a while, um, you start, and, and now they're dealing with maybe some symptoms from those hits, um, that, you know, they're, they're wondering, they're saying to this, themselves, you know, uh, my family's looking at me differently. I'm, uh, you know, I'm blowing up for things that I never really would have, uh, you know, done before, and what's happening to me. And so, as, you know, as those people are having access to the, you know, to the CTE test and whatnot, now the dots are being connected. They're speaking out because it's a huge weight off their, uh, off their chest uh, because they've been living with things like this for a long time. And it's not just the cognitive ability, it's also that em emotional side yeah. as well that plays, would you say it plays a bigger part or just as much of an equal yeah. part? You can, you, can, um, you can suck up headaches all day long but when you see the look in your kid's eyes, when you scream at them for something that um, you normally wouldn't scream at them for, and then your next emotion is, oh my God, why did I just do that? What, you know? and, and so there's a downward spiral that occurs when, when something like that happens, and, um, and that's a pretty common symptom. And I know after League of Denial aired, the NFL has always taken a strong stance saying, you know, we football does not cause concussions. We have nothing to do with this. And even though they have settlements, they really don't want to take any blame. Do you feel that they should be kind of stepping up and taking more 
of the blame or, oh, well, that's just something that happens and you just kind of got to deal with it? I think that the settlement was well-timed that, so that they didn't lose more. I think that, uh, I think that they were so close to the point of discovery where they stood to lose probably billions. Uh, and so, so in, in that event, I, I think that uh, it worked out pretty well for them. I would love to see them step up more. I do think that um, you know, they're much more aware of things these days, and I think that players can only help, or can't help, to, to listen to the news around them and become a little more aware. We asked on Facebook if anybody had any questions or wanted to kind of do a follow-up since League of Denial has aired, and the concussions topic has really been talked about a lot in this country because of that. And Janine said, how do you or your counterparts plan on reaching those athletes who are against baseline testing? Well, I think that the, part of the reason I started the Knockout Project, uh, one of them was to uh, highlight sort of what we were going through as athletes, mistakes that we had made. And uh, those mistakes had led us to where we're at. You know, a lot of us are retired um, unwillingly from sports, and sometimes the pain of losing your sport is just as bad as the physical pain that you're going through. And so um, if we can, uh, you know, on the Knockout Project, we tell, some, we tell stories, athlete stories. A lot of them are high school age athletes. And it's about uh, not only what they're going through at school, but it's about the loss of their sport. And so, you know, there's two things at stake. There's your health. And, and then, you know, what if, what if your sport's taken away from you? Um, and so that, we hope, uh, enough people will start to see over time and will become a little bit of a deterrent. If you had a son, would you let him play football or do or play any sport that involved possible head injuries? I have a son. Um, I wouldn't let him play football uh, unless, uh, not, not until his uh, high school years. A lot of the leading neurologists, Dr. Cantu in Boston, uh, you know, is right at the tip of that spear, have come out and said really that uh, childhood uh, structure just doesn't lend itself well to those kinds of beatings and that, uh, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna play football, you really shouldn't do it before your freshman year in high school. What if your son wants to become a former, or become a BMX racer? If your son wanted to become a BMX racer, Yeah, um, what would he's you asked. <laughs> um, I love BMX, uh, and and um, there was nothing wrong with BMX. I mean, it's a dangerous sport. It's a fast sport. The problem was that I was ignorant as to what would happen uh, when I hit my head. You know, had concussions that I blew off, and I thought I treated them like they were broken bones, that sort of thing. And so, part of the reason that I'm speaking out is to tell people that look, if you get hit, you know, get it checked out, mm -hmm. um, be treated you know, and observe proper return to play protocol because, you know, you're going to be able generally to increase the amount of time that you're in that sport if you're smart about it. But if you just go out there and you plow through head injuries like I did, you're gonna have a very short run. Gotcha, all right. Jay Frega, former athlete, founder of the Knockout Project. Thanks for telling us about this. Thank you.